What's up, it's Chanel, and welcome to a new episode of Coffee Time with Chanel. Today's video is brought to you by Elizabeth H. Because, yeah, she sent this coffee over a while back, and I've been putting off this review just because I honestly thought I did it already, and yeah, I didn't, but luckily, I had enough left to make a pot this morning, and this is Kaluai Coffee Dark Roast, and as you know, we like to go over dark roasts when we do coffee time videos. And this unique blend begins at our Kalua estate, where our, or our orchard is nourished by rich volcanic soil and showered by fresh mountain rain. Kissed by the bright Pacific sun and cooled by the gentle... Hawaiian trade winds. Come visit our beautiful estate on the southern on the southern shore of Kaluai. And I apologize if I butchered any Hawaiian names. I mean, no disrespect, but it's just some good stuff here. And honestly, like that write up is way more metal. Then like, ah shit, I forgot. We're having that the funeral stuff here on Saturday. All my, that, it's put away. But hold on. There it is. Also, amazing coffee grinder. Highly, highly recommended. Hamilton. Fucking beach. Good shit. But here it is. This hard hardcore coffee. If you remember when I went over it. Here's the bag. I knew I, I saved it. But uh like just chill with the whole gimmick stuff. Like if you're gonna make strong hardcore dark roast coffee. Make it fucking, you know, don't just, like, like, come on. Like, gimmicks upon gimmicks upon gimmicks. It's unnecessary. Good coffee is good coffee. Hell, I don't care. This is an unpopular opinion. A couple weeks ago, all I had was... Again, I might a uh, couple little beans left, but all I had was what I thought was going to be a hundred percent boof on the coffee scale breakfast blend Starbucks. But oh my goodness, was it delicious! Like, it wasn't, you know, strong or anything like that, but, like, it was good. And I'm not going to lie about that shit. If, again, if I thought it sucked, I would tell you. But honestly, for a corporate coffee company, like, hey, you know, I'm sure that cup of, like, if you bought a straight up cup, of that breakfast blend, it's not going to be worth your money. But I got a big fucking, like, pounder at a Marshall's on sale for, like, six ninety nine. Like, again, like, it's just a deal you can't go wrong with. Like, especially if you're on a kind of fixed income, like... I, I need some dental work done, and, like, I've just been doing pretty much what you do in jail when you have 
mouth pain. You just pour hot coffee on the area that hurts. Because, like, I'm all out of RSO capsules, which sucks. And it is what it is. But aloha from Kaluai. Out of love and respect for our land, we are committed to sustainable farming practices, including drip irrigation, on-site composting, and industry-leading employee benefits. That would be awesome. Imagine working like at a coffee company, and then a coffee company from Hawaii is like, hey... You can live in Hawaii and we'll take care of your health benefits, dental benefits, etc. Fucking A. That's, you know, to the, the real job type job. Like, that's, you know, one day, folks, I'm going, I'm going to own my own coffee shop slash record store slash BMX and skate shop with monthly shows down the basement. Something I've always wanted to do. That's just a goal of mine in the future. But 10% Hawaiian coffee sourced from our Kalua estate. And this is... Kaluai Coffee Company, LLC, Hawaii, USA. And this dark roast, it's definitely one of my favorites I've gone over on recent Coffee Time episodes. It's just fucking dialed. Like, not too strong not too like, like it has this awesome taste to it it's just it's fire literally fire but um the result is a responsibly crafted coffee with a consistency of flavor and quality that can only be found in paradise they have a good graphic designer also. I think I really like, uh, I know it's corny, folks, but like, for real. In my opinion, this shit's important. Product packaging, cosmetics, and even when it comes to magazines. Who appears on the cover? I thought it was awesome to see that Holder was on the cover of, uh, was on the cover of uh, the new issue of Decibel. And reading her article while enjoying my coffee, I was kind of pissed off immediately. Although, I, you got to read a little bit further down and then you'll understand what she's getting at here. But um, when Holder's interview opens up with Fuck Dungeon Synth. I was kind of upset. But as a fan of Holder, I let it go. But fuck Dungeon Synth. Not the music. A lot of that shit sounds amazing. In the right context, under perfect lighting. Here's where it gets a little, like... Okay, maybe with an epic tome in hand. And then, like, it, this makes a lot more sense. Perhaps serenaded by the distinct sense of nature or the decidedly old world industries of metalworking, thatch weaving, or the preparation of hearty folk cuisine. But that genre label should probably... Jiggery jig its britches down to the bend in the river, just past the old sawmill, and fucking drown itself. 
The melodic and textural concepts involved can be mysteriously thought-provoking at its core. It is forever the Samwise Gamgee of music. Inherently a travel companion, but never the ring bearer for very long. Let it shine as the score on a slew of imagined sequels to those beloved 80s fantasies of varying, varying quanti quality, a never-ending story, labyrinth, etc., legend, or pair it with metal's razor intentions for maximum misanthropic impact, but on its own, it will happily tend the verge as age melts into age without ever so much as venturing to breathe for some new tools or a pint of ale? Uh, that's where I disagree. Miss Osborne, the Inquisitor, a.k.a. Mars. I just really disagree with that. But I, you know, I love Holder's music. Still would love to see you live in Philadelphia. I feel the concept of subgenres has become sort of mockery of itself and is frankly a waste of time. Then you probably should get off your current record label that kind of rely on subgenres. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. When I was reading this, I kind of was just like, I get some of it, but some of it comes off as very high and mighty, and it just rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. Especially because 20 bucks spin is kind of like, I mean, like, I'm not putting worm on blast, but like, death, doom is like, you know kind of thrown at you whenever, like, let me try and find a, uh, Dark Descent, but, um, it looks like she's been working out with, um, Casey, though, in the gym, like, serious, seriously, like, I wouldn't mess with her, she definitely could beat my ass, like, seriously, and this, too, I expect the second holder full length will be a game changer for United States black metal. And that's coming from Dave at 20 bucks spin. That's kind of crazy. I don't know how true that's going to be, but, you know, I'll... Like, again, Dave has one of those ears when it comes to music that, you know... Just look at 20 bucks spins roster. Like from Fetid to Mournful Congregation. If you go back to the Endless Blockade, Graves at Sea, Asander, Intensive Care. Really good shit. Iron Age. And, uh,. I'm still gutted I missed that Philly show and like I showed up fucking week late. Ugh. And I haven't been back to that venue since. Like it just left such a bad taste in my mouth. And I haven't been able to find a ride there. Like I missed Oxygen Destroyer because no one wanted to go to the venue because Fulci was playing the New York show, and everybody wanted to go to the New York show. I think Jersey, too. So everyone just went to that. So I couldn't... Like, I tried hard, too. And like, Also, speaking of Worm, yeah, it got a 9 out of 10 in the new Decibel. I was kind of stoked. I, I sent Phantom Slaughter, uh, you know, stoke, stokage yesterday. Also, was bummed. I had no idea Goblin was coming to Philly for three shows. And two are sold out. But there's a matinee that is not sold out on the 11th of November. Now, it's...
Do I go see Goblin? It's probably going to sell out. Or do I go see Merciful Fate? Or do I just... Next time I get money, it's 100%. Because I'm in a lot of pain right now. I, I probably need some RSO capsules. But, yeah. I'm like looking at this like, fuck. I should probably get this for like a, a birthday present or something. Like, either a goblin ticket or merciful fate. And I don't care. I know I've been kind of making a fuss about it. That Merciful Fate's probably not going to play material from the 90s. And I was thinking about it. If you cut Satan's Fall out of the set, you can add, like, a track from 9, a track from Time. Like, you can add a track from each 90s record in the time that Satan's Fall goes. So, I know the king is not going to watch this. I'm sure they have a set list already. It's probably going to be the... Excuse me. The Vegas set. But a, a tour version of that. And, again, like that new song... Come on, I, I get it, but, like, it just, I'm sorry. Do the right thing here. You have more than just, the nuns have no fun EP, don't break the oath, and Melissa. There is way more to Merciful Fate than just those three releases. I know some of you don't care, but I do. And I really care about how sick these Pyropress ads have been in recent issues of Decibel. Heavy hails to uh, Vicky and um, trying to think of her partner. Uh, but uh, yeah, just, you know, fucking heavy hails. Because I remember they did this fir the first batch of Cerebral Rot Longsleeve. And uh, I ran into Vicky at Necrot, Blood Incantation, Morbid Angel, and uh, I think fucking Immolation. Ah, uh, fuck, who was on that tour? I think it was Immolation. Because that's, yeah, we were talking, we started talking about merch and stuff. Because Immolation, again, if you're a band, all right. If you ever get a chance to see Immolation live, just go to their merch table and just take a look. Because they have t-shirts and long sleeves for every single album. Doesn't matter if it was popular or not. And I just thought that was so fucking cool. They might have been missing a you but like I'm pretty sure they had one of each and like honestly I think the only shirt they didn't have was Dawn of Possession because I ended up getting the um can you hear us death to Jesus uh shirt instead and I, I remember i got that for a reason but um yeah hails the pirate press because i i just think this is fucking so awesome but uh pure evil since 1996 so that's i didn't know that pirate press had been around that long because i swore it was those cerebral rot cessation of rot Cessation of Light long sleeves. I swore they were like the first. Or maybe those were the first that were pressed in their own building. But I just remember like it was a big deal. And I had the same shirt on as Liz. And uh, not Liz, I'm sorry, uh, Vicky. And 
I just remember she was like, how comfortable is it? Like, are the sleeves long enough, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, yeah, like, and everything I've gotten from Pyro Press and Inferno, the best. Like, seriously, the fucking best. Inferno, I've done like 99% of my Nuclear War Now shirts. Like, and everything I've gotten from Pyro Press has, has just been top fucking shelf also. Heavy ink is important, folks. But are you a total fucking maniac? Prove it. Order now. I wish, but I just uh, pre-ordered and ascended dead long sleeve. So, fucking A. Pyro Press. But, um... I want to get back to Holder in a minute, because, uh, again, it just, whoa, a Celtic Frost Deluxe Discography box set, 84 to 87. Oh, uh, well, it's, oh, fuck, wait, a new 7-inch single, what? Visual Aggression? Oh, back on, Von wait. Yeah, back on vinyl for the first time in decades. All right. Whoa. Yo, yo, Grave Hill Bunker rehearsals demo? All right. This is called Dance Macabre, a deluxe discography box set, 1984 to 87. This six-album box set includes Morbid Tales to Mega Theron and Into the Pandemonium. Oh man. Where's Cold Lake? Fuck! <laughs> Whoa, there's a fucking heptagam? USB drive? Oh, this probably costs so much money. Six album box set, deluxe vinyl editions of Emperor's Return, Tragic Sem- Wow. This is gnarly. A 40-page book? All right, <laughs> and it's also available as a deluxe five CD box set. This is where, if you're a fan of CDs, you kind of get shafted, but not really if you just want the music. Like, what I mean by shafted is like there is so much gnarly shit that comes with this. It's ridiculous. But, uh, I had no idea, like, eh, I'm not even gonna get into that. That's something I'll get into in a different video. But speaking of immolation, fuck yeah. This is so good. I didn't even know Black Anvil was still a band. They seem to be on an increasingly sketchy roster of Season of Mist. Yikes. Not a big Destroyer 666 fan. Sorry, it's not, not my thing. Huh. Yeah, here we go. All right. So, Holder is on 20 bucks spin. So, here's a 20 bucks spin ad. And, you know, Dream Unending, Song of Salvation, a wretching voyage into the heart of tragedy and renewal. All right. No, you know, subgenre names when it comes to the hype there. Worm Blue Nothing, a gateway to a new dimension of necromantic black doom. So, there's your subgenre tag. Daiva through sheer will and black magic. Early black metal and jagged thrash storm of abomination. Espalix, with, with Theophantology. 
fourth album of cerebrum shattering Bay Area death metal. Not just death metal, you gotta know it's Bay Area death metal. And that does, to me, mean a lot. But again, you know, 20 bucks spin definitely, you know, use sub label tags. I can't think of a label that doesn't from brutal death metal, like instead of just calling it death metal. And I know there's a difference, but like sometimes I agree with like, you know, Hey, let's just call black metal, black metal. Let's just call death metal, death metal. You know, like everything else, let's just consider it experimental instead of like, oh, it's dungeon synth. Look, it's lo-fi dungeon synth. And like, I'm guilty of that. I'm also guilty of not knowing that Eternal Nightmare by Violence got reissued on fucking vinyl, which I'm sure my local record store actually has. Available everywhere November 28th. Oh, fuck, it's on cassette too? I doubt they'll have the cassette, but I would love to have that on tape. But yeah, I was reading this holder interview, and it just kind of, I don't know, it didn't rub me the wrong way, it just kind of came out as just, uh, I don't know, it just wasn't really, like, what I expected, to be honest. But it is what it is, because all I really care about is, you know, the tunes and whatnot. And speaking of Sam Osborne, what the hell's going on with Bone Sickness? I thought there was like a new album coming out and stuff. But speaking of new albums, this is something I knew about for a couple months now. And I kept my fucking mouth shut. And that was the return of Rambo. One of Philly's just it, legendary Philly act right here. If you can find some of their live footage, like high school me just started like bugging out. And then today it's like everywhere on the fucking internet. And it's like, okay. <laughs> like, fuck. I guess it's not a surprise at all anymore. Like the pre-orders are up. I don't know why they signed a relapse, especially Tony Pointless, but like, yeah, I get it though, you know, Tony's a fucking legend and he deserves a little bit of money and whatnot, because I guarantee, Ramp, like, it's gonna sell the fuck out on vinyl, cassette, if you know who Rambo is, I already pretty much have guessed who are going to be playing the Philadelphia guest spot when it comes to the Metal and Beer Fest this year. And if it is who I think it is, I need to get a ticket because it's going to be ridiculous. That's all I got to say because imagine like a crusty, hardcore version of Guar. Like, live performance-wise. Because that's what fucking Rambo bring to the stage. And it is so much fun. Hails to the Rotunda in University City. But, back to the coffee real quick. I didn't mean for this to go on so long. Thank you again to Liz. Heavy hails to Decibel for still sending me periodicals after I was an intern back in 2005. I was an intern at Decibel. And just so you know, rest in peace, Trevor, brother. There's this, and 
I'm not the biggest Black Dahlia mur murder fan. I honestly haven't listened to a full length since my asthma. But I, I was friends with Trevor and whatnot. And they have this Christmas recording. Somebody posted this online. I don't, I don't know if it was Metal Blade. But, um, it, it was on fucking YouTube, and then I saw this ad for it, and I was like, ooh, like, did somebody leak this? Well, it's called Yule Mall, a holiday variety extravaganza. It was, like, making me laugh and stuff, and it was filmed live on Friday, December 18th, 2020. So maybe it was streamed on YouTube, and, or, and I just didn't know about it. Because, like, comedian Neil Hamburger, like, posted it and stuff. But it just, you know, I don't know if this is the last footage you'll ever see with, like, Trevor performing songs by the Black Dahlia Murder. That's why I'm throwing this out there. It's important in that aspect if, you know, you knew Trevor or anything along those lines. But, yeah, very interesting article with Holder. It's a pretty good issue of Decibel, honestly. Except for the Hall of Fame. Fuck, sh I'm sorry, I can't stand strapping young lad. Shit is just garbage. Always has been. It's just something I just do not like at all. And, like, especially, like, when it comes to, like, industrial metal, like, just listen to God Flesh. You don't, you're good. Early swans, you're fine. You don't need this fucking shit. But when it comes to coffee, you always need coffee. And I really am digging this Hawaiian stuff. And again, I know this might be nice and bright and have pretty packaging. But this shit packs a wallop. Really delicious dark roast by Kaluai Coffee. Get into it. Aloha. I would like to check this store out and try and get some coffee from the actual source. I like how it tells you also, like, two tablespoons of coffee plus six ounces of water equals awesome. It doesn't say that, but that's, you know, pretty much what happened. And yeah, when it comes to Hawaiian coffee, Kaluai coffee with their dark roast is fucking fire. And again, it was nourished by rich volcanic soil, so fucking A. But it's also delicious. Sadly, not nutritious, but that rhymed because I'm vicious. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Thank you again to Elizabeth for snagging coffee for the channel. And myself, fucking Red, thank you so much. And you maniacs that watch, if you made it 33 fucking minutes into this video today, you are a sicko. And again, the new decibel has Holder on the cover and a good article with her. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, as always, for watching, you fucking rule. If you want more Coffee Time videos, request it in the Patreon or Patreon, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Kiss the goat, motherfucker. Hails.